Hello, my name is John Fay, and I teach for the Northwestern University Center for Public Safety. Today we're going to talk about the addictive personality as part of the problem employee. The medical, American Medical Association has determined that addiction is in fact a disease. Many people might argue that it is a choice and not so much a disease. They have shown that 50 to 60 percent of the disease concept from addiction, as such as alcoholism, is genetic. In looking at family lines and things like that, uh, we, in my family, used to call it the Irish flu. And we see that not only is it uh, an addiction in regards to genetic lineage, but it's also, they say, in regards to the environment. So they say upwards of 40 to 50 percent of alcoholism is due to the environment. Now the competing factors in this is dependence and addiction. And where do people draw that line? Dependence, like anything in the human body, you get used to a certain dosage of things. Some of us take prescription pain medications, some of us have a cup of coffee in the morning, all these different things. And our bodies get used to these things. And they do create sometimes or crave a dependence on a certain chemical or feeling. The synapses in our brain where dopamine is released, that's what gives us that euphoric effect. Addiction, on the other hand, is where we can no longer control what it is that gives us these cravings. So addiction or problem drinking or things like that, that's where problems stem from hiding what you're drinking, lying about things, anything that would lead to criminal behavior. So addiction and dependence, that fine line, is when you start to have a lot of problems because of what you're taking. Now sometimes people say, is it just a lack of willpower? Can you will this away? And I just encourage you that the, I was listening to a very strong individual one day and he had very large muscles and he talked to us about uh, willpower. And he asked the audience, how much do you think you can do on your own, that you can will things away? And, and he asked that about, do you think people should be able to put down the bottle? And his antidote of the story was, he said, well, the next time that you get diarrhea, see how much you can will that away. Now, I know that's not a pleasant story, but his point was addiction crosses that line. As you can see in this slide, there's an arrow going up. And to give you an example of where would something be called addiction or problem drinking would be this. Say, for example, you've been drinking for about three or four years. And all of a sudden, you realize, I'm not acting right, people are making comments about me and things like that. And you decide at that point where the arrow stops that you're going to put the bottle down for a while. So you do that for maybe six months, a year, two years, and you have sobriety for two years. The point of addiction, which is difficult for all of us, is there's no definitive measure of addiction. I cannot take a blood test and determine if you have alcoholism or any other addiction. Your body doesn't reflect it that way. But it does reflect it in the way that it behaves. And as you see in the slide, at the point where the two lines go off in different directions is where you would say you were drinking for, say, five years. You went on two years of sobriety. Where, where it might be a dependence or not much of a problem is that you'll see the straight line going across. And that's where you would pick up the bottle again. The person who's alcoholic or the problem drinking, drinker, this line is going to go straight up. And what that means is the five years of drinking plus the two years of sobriety is you're going to binge like you've been drinking seven years. So that's the determining factor for alcoholism. It's very difficult to diagnose. And as supervisors, the only thing we can do is look at behavior that's reflective to drinking. So you might see an officer who people make jokes about in roll call about, you should have seen what you were doing last night. And he doesn't remember. Those are the first stages of blackouts. And he's the first guy to run out of roll call and go check his bumper for hair and teeth because he doesn't remember how he got home. Or he goes to certain situations and he has three or four drinks before everyone gets there. All these different little things add up to a fact that someone could have a problem drinking. So the addictive personality looks at, in the problem drinker or the person who's addicted to pain medications or the person that goes on the internet, all these different things add up to they cannot do their regular jobs well without being pulled away because of their addiction. And so the number one drug of choice that we see for police officers has been alcohol, and that's traditionally been the number one drug. 
What we're seeing more and more often of is that there are a great number of officers that are becoming dependent on prescription medications. For example, an officer goes and has oral surgery or he or she gets hurt in a, in a fight in the line of duty or something happens, they go to the orthopedic doctor and they are prescribed something like Oxycontin, Vicodin, other medications like that. They're narcotics. They become very, very addictive over time. And what happens is the officer rationalizes in his and her intake that she, she or he can continue maintaining their level of narcotic ingestion and all of a sudden they reach past that line of addiction. The other thing that you can do in the addictive personality is if the person is willing to get help, you can ask them to go in, meet with their physician, meet with someone who's a specialist in addictions, and once you stop drinking, for example, you can take a medication called Anabuse, which actually keeps you from wanting the craved alcohol and also also cause you to throw up if you ingest alcohol. If you get caught up on prescription drugs, there are things like Suboxone and other methadone and other medications that will help you not crave, it is, crave what it is that you want to take. So the sad reality to all this is there's no cure to addiction. It's more or less a behavior modification. So we send officers to go to AA meetings. We send officers to work out what it is that they're craving. And then when they have the opportunity to find sobriety, then they start to address the other issues that are going on in their life. Now some of us have what's called a predisposition. And it can start the minute we pick up a bottle 10 years from now, or if we picked it up in our teen years, whenever it is, some of us have a predisposition, and that's the genetic factor. Then we have to deal with the fact that some of us will just become dependent, and we're not going to have addiction. But the key component to all of this is that we note what behaviors someone's doing in regards to their ingestion of alcohol or prescription drugs. And a key component is I caution you, those supervisors, you probably have random drug testing in your respective departments. Please know that many tests that police run in random drug testing, they run these what are called panels of medicines or narcotics or drugs that they're gonna check for. And many times they don't even include the prescription medications that officers are getting addicted to. So make sure that if you're doing drug testing that you make sure that they're including the medications like Oxycontin and others that doctors are prescribing. Thank you.